G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Wave Photography. In this video, I have five incredible Photoshop tips for landscape photography. Two really easy, really fast correction tips that are going to make your life a whole lot easier in Photoshop. And then three enhancement tips that are really going to help transform those ordinary images into something extraordinary, something we're really proud of. Let's jump in and take a look. Now before we jump in and take a look at the demonstration of these five tips, let's take a look at exactly what we're going to be doing. So as I said, a couple of correction tips. I have a color correction tip. So there's the raw file there. And then I have a five second correction technique that will take the blue out of that and transform the image to a perfectly color correct image like that. Okay. Huge um, improvement. Then I have an exposure correction tip. Again, it's a 5-10 second technique that will take a raw file, a dull raw file like that, correct the exposure and correct the color, transforming it into something like that. And as I said, I have three other incredible enhancement techniques that will help you to effortlessly transform ordinary images into extraordinary photography. Let's take a look at the first. Here's the raw file. And again, I have a very simple one-step technique to give specific areas of your image incredible pop and wow factor. Okay, let's move along. I have another pretty simple technique here, one-step technique to add a whole bunch of mood and atmosphere to your image by using color. There's the starting point there, and a bunch more mood. I think you'll agree when we add a color wash like this. Before, quite cold, quite clinical, and after, warm, atmospheric. It's got a lot going on and a lot of mood. And last of all, I have this image here. So there's the starting point. Once again, this is pretty much a single step technique. You'll see three layers here, but it's really the first one that I'm going to demonstrate, but this is the finished product here, painting with pure sunlight, okay? Pretty easy technique, and we're going to show you exactly how to paint with pure sunlight onto your images. Okay, let's get back to the start and run through these techniques. And the first technique we have here is color correction or color neutralize. Let me delete that layer out of the way down to the trash bin there. And you can see this image I have here is very blue. I imagine I probably captured this image with a 10 stop Lee neutral density filter, which gives it this rich blue color cast. Okay. Now this technique is super easy. Let's jump in and take a look. First of all, we're going to duplicate the background layer by pressing Command or Control J. Now you could name this layer if you like, color correct. I don't tend to name my layers because you can just turn them on and off and see what they're doing. But making sure that color correct layer is selected, we move up to the image menu at the top of the page, down to adjustments, over and down to match color. This is a bit of a secret color correction technique actually, but it's very easy, very fast. All we need to do is one click of the neutralize checkbox here and that blue color will be completely taken away. And that is perfectly color correct, okay? And as easy as that, we click okay. Now the only time you might struggle with this particular technique, if you have a really beautiful orange red sunrise or sunset, it will likely take some of that warmth out of that particular image. So I wouldn't recommend it for those vibrant sunrise or sunset shots, but within the Easy Way Photography course, I have another simple color correction technique for handling those images. Let's move on to the next example. This particular technique is called Auto Curves and it will correct the exposure, the level of contrast, and even the color within your images. Now this is something that I would do right towards the beginning of the workflow. In fact, within the Easy Way Photography workflow, it is in step two of the five step workflow. We move down here to the adjustment layer icon, the little black and white 
circular icon down below the layer panel, select curves, and we get our curves panel here in the properties panel. We just need to click the auto button just up here. And you can see that hasn't done a lot initially, but there's a secret behind the scenes menu. If we hold down Alt or Option, click Auto once more, we get this little panel here, which has three more options, plus a couple more of snap neutral midtones. And all I like to do here is just click through the options until I find one that I like. You can see that's the one that I showed in the example, particularly beautiful, very similar there too quite blue there as well. Now I do kind of like the blue, it's got a lot of mood and atmosphere, so there's no reason why you couldn't go with that one as well. Yeah, I'm not really a huge fan of that one. So for this example, I like Enhance Per Channel Contrast, then we can just also try Snap Neutral Midtones, and see how that just warms up a little bit. I prefer Snap Neutral Midtones on in this case, rather than off, so I'll run with that one. Okay, so once again, very simple, very effective technique for correcting your RAW file. Let's move on to the really good stuff. This one is called Split Curve Contrast. Drag that away. And what we're going to do, Split Curve Contrast is really awesome at adding pop and wow factor into specific areas of your image. So, so I want to make this beautiful granite boulder on the beach here really pop out. So let's apply split curve contrast. Now we move back down to the uh, adjustment layer icon, the little black and white circle. Select curves once again. This time from our properties panel on the other side, the far left top corner, we click the little hand icon here. And as we drag that over the rock, I want you to look over here to the graph and you'll see a little dancing pixel. Okay, see that circle dancing around? That tells me what pixel I'm currently sitting on. So if I go in the sky here, you can see the pixel moves all the way towards the right hand side. And if I find a really dark area, it moves all the way to the left. And you can see these black and white sliders below the graph indicate which area is the dark end of the histogram. Okay, so here and the light area of the histogram up towards that end. Now when we normally apply contrast, we apply it across all of the tones, but what we're going to do here is specifically target the tones within this rock, the light and dark areas within this rock. We'll then lighten the lights, darken the darks, give this rock an incredible boost. So by hovering this little icon around the rock here, whilst we look at the graph, we can see where the lighter pixels are. There's some light pixels there. You can see they're around about here. And then the darker pixels, you see those, they're round about there. And I can actually click directly on the image to place a dot if I like. Now with this particular technique, generally all you need to do is move the top point in an upwards direction. And you can be fairly aggressive, something like that. And then basically we move down to our layer mask, we press Command or Control I to invert to black, which will hide that effect. We go B for brush, making sure we're using a white brush, and yeah, about 30% opacity and roughly 50% flow, making sure we've got a soft brush there. And of course, all of this is explained step by step in the beginner section of the workflow at Easy Way Photography. And we can just paint on a bit of that pop. And look at the way that has just come to life. Okay. We would then tidy up uh, those edges. You can see I've painted outside the edges. We would tidy that up with, uh, with a mask or with blend if all of course is within the course. Let's take one more look because this is pretty awesome. Before, lifeless, drab, not much going on. Look at this rock now. Boom, it's the life of the party, life of the image. Moving along, solid color in soft light. We're going to add mood and atmosphere using color. Let's delete that. Once again, a simple one-step technique here. Move down to our adjustment layers icon. Select solid color from the top of the menu. And bear with me here. What we're going to do is from, well, first of all, make sure that you have the same color panel that I do by selecting H for hue. 
right up the top here. And then what we're going to do in the hue slider, the rainbow slider, we'll move that slider up to the oranges between yellow and red. Just initially, we can change this later, of course. And then click roughly around about here in the bottom right corner. We're looking for a orangey brown. Click OK. Then one more step, so it's really a two-step process. We click on the blend modes where it says normal and select soft light from about halfway down. Now that was a little bit of a guess, but I'm sure you'll agree that's already put a whole bunch of mood and atmosphere into this image. You know, you can see that. It's quite nice as it is there, but it's quite kind of cold, quite I guess I feel like clinical, like it's, it doesn't have much mood, it's quite neutral. And then with this layer, we've got a whole bunch of mood and atmosphere coming directly into that image with one layer. Now that was a bit of a guess initially, that colour. So what we can do now is double click on the little coloured icon here, brings us back into the menu, and we can bounce around and find the perfect colour for us. I like that there. Now of course we can also change the colour over here too if you want to get really artistic. I find those oranges tend to work the best though. Once again before, yeah, nice image, not really speaking to me that much. Now a bunch more mood, a lot more wow factor and a lot more life in this particular image. Let's look at the last one, my favourite. We're going to paint with pure sunlight, okay? So once again let's show you what we're going to do. There's the raw file pretty much, not much done to that. And then that's the effect we're going to achieve. Let's delete them out of the way. Whoops, delete those out of the way. Now the hero of the technique is the first part of the equation here that we're going to apply. Once again, down to our adjustment layers icon. We're again going to choose solid color. And once again, we'll start in those oranges. But this time I might just click right in the middle there, somewhere near the middle. Click OK, and the blend mode to paint with pure sunlight changes from normal to color dodge. OK, it doesn't look perfect just now, but we will double click on that colored icon and find one that looks like pure sunlight. And look, you can go a little bit over the top because we're going to mask this in anyway. change with the rainbow slider here too. Just till your eye, I'm, I'm trying to ignore the sky and just look at the beautiful castle here and the grasses to determine what I think sunlight looks like. Look, let's run with that. It's a bit over the top, but when we mask it in, it will be fine. Make sure you now click back on your mask. Once again, Command or Control I for Invert, B for Brush, and this time we'll paint it in really softly, maybe down at around 20% opacity, 50% flow roughly, and again a 0% hardness brush. Look at this, painting with pure golden sunlight. Now, of course, the benefit of this, if, if you're not happy with that color, which I'm not perfectly happy with, we can double click in now that we've masked that in and find a better color. I'm just going to lift that into the yellows a little bit more. See how that's more like a sunlight color now. It was a little warm before, a little red. Okay, that's great. Back on my mask. And then of course we would clean that mask up. I'm just going to double click on this blank space. Now this is a little bit advanced. This, is, uh, this blend if technique is part of the advanced course, but it's a really fast way of cleaning up your adjustment layers. So we can remove this particular effect from the sky. See that? With this slider here. It's based on luminosity. It's not luminosity masking, or in fact it is a kind of luminosity masking. It definitely is. But it's very visual, so you can see I can just move that along like that. I then hold down Option or Alt, split that off to get a nice little graduation there. And we can see we've tidied that up. Now I'm just going to add a little shadow to the left side of the castle to add to the drama. Once again, the adjustment layers icon, 
this time curves. One point in the middle of that curve, drag down. Command or Control Invert to turn the mask black. And we'll just turn the opacity up around 30 there. Throw a bit of shadow on that side for drama. We can darken off our sky and the edges for a bit of drama. Okay, and we can also maybe just give it a little bit of pop using our split curve contrast. So as we did in the previous example, you can see this time those tones are a little higher on the graph. They're up here. A little bit of pop like that. Command or Control Invert. B to go back to my brush. Paint that in. And look at that. Once again, let's turn those off. Raw file. Painting with pure sunlight. Absolutely stunning. And there they are, my five top Photoshop tips for landscape photography. If you love this video, be sure to let me know with a like or a comment below, or follow the page if you like as well for future videos. You could also share this video with your friends, which will then save the video to your Facebook profile for future reference, so you can watch it again whenever you like. Now, if you're interested in a complete five-step workflow for landscape photography, which will effortlessly transform ordinary. Now I'm not suggesting that all of your images are ordinary, but let's be honest, I've got a bunch of ordinary images here, and I'm sure you've got a bunch of ordinary images as well. And if we can transform those ordinary images into extraordinary photography, imagine what we can do with the good ones. Okay, so if you're interested in that, check out easywayphotography.com.au. Thank you once again for watching along, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.